So welcome or happy holidays, everyone. You are joining the Barclay Group's Fireside Chat. I am Sharonica Burgess, the CEO and founder, and we are joined today by Dr. Ozzy Ahmed, as you guys have uh, had the opportunity to hear him uh, a few times. He is an epidemiologist and family medicine physician. He has been taking us through the pandemic uh, for quite some time since it started. So the first couple episodes, one and two, focus on the epidemiology. Uh, episode three was on vaccination. Episode four was on Delta variant. And here we are right now with episode five going over the Omicron variant. And so while this actually will be our last segment before we go into the new year, which is quite timely with everything going on. So if you haven't had the opportunity to check them out, go to the Barclay Group's YouTube page. We have all the videos saved, lots of great information, a lot of community questions he answers. Uh, we're here just to be a point of edification and to gain better understanding. So uh, before we even get started, so here we are, Dr. Ahmed, <laughs> year, going into year three. And I'll just put this before us. I know a lot of people are like, okay, this is year three. Are we gonna see a breakthrough? Uh, where, where are we? I know here in Atlanta, they've already canceled the peach tree ball drop for the third year in a row. Uh, some of our universities are going back to remote. Um, just a lot of, just impatience at this point. So wh where are we when it comes to the Omicron variant? Are we closer to an ending or is this, this new uprising a, a rehash <laughs> three years ago? I uh, thank you very much, but I can say that we are kind of uh, um, for a, a, another group. Uh, of an and I think your microphone is going in and out just a second. Let's see. There we go. Hello. Yep, that's awesome. Yep. So are, are we near a breakthrough or do we need to fasten up for another ride? I think it's a repeat it, and it will be, it will continue to be a repeat as long as we have a lot of un unvaccinated people mm -hmm. because it's a, to me, it's kind of a race with time. Okay. And as long as the virus has a place to go mm -hmm. and just being a virus, like when you say being a kid, kids play and do funny things and, you know, and get themselves in trouble. Viruses do the right. same. They multiply. That's and... a good parallel. I, I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I think viruses do multiply and throughout the process of multiplication and survival and evolution, if you will, mm -hmm. they end up mutate and based on the numbers of people that's available out there to infect, to go into mm -hmm. their bodies, there will be another variant and another variant and another variant forever. Okay. Unless the whole world gets, not just the, probably the starting with the United States, but everybody else get vaccinated and get vaccinated at the same time. Ah. But this staggering issue is like, just the virus will go somewhere else like we've seen in South Africa. Right. So one of the things that uh, we wanted to hop on are the similarities and differences between Omicron and Delta. So I know there have been questions about, okay, well, Omicron is highly more contagious, but the symptoms have been a lot less versus Delta variant having a lot more severe symptoms. So there's a lot of questions in the community and just in the health population about what, what is the, the change in the variants and what's caused, what's driving it? I think uh, you're absolutely correct. Um, the main difference is transmissibility is the ability to infect a lot of people for Omicron uh, faster than, uh, than Delta. And Delta, uh, despite the fact that relatively it was, it was more transmissible and spreads easier than alpha, beta, gamma, original virus. Um, it was a, uh, a more severe disease, meaning a lot of hospitalizations and a lot of, relatively a lot of death compared to um, Omicron. 
So Omicron has the opposite features of Delta. It transmits more readily and the doubling time, the time it takes to double the number of cases is short or shorter than any virus before it in the COVID uh, kind of lineage. And I think as a result, you get a lot of cases and even when you get a lot of cases with something less severe, it's still, you will have a larger number of people in the hospitals and you'll have a larger number of people dead just because you have a huge number of people infected to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you brought that up because I wanted to present to you the kind of, I guess, psychology behind it, the symptoms being less severe. So being that the Omicron variant does have less severe symptoms, does that mean we get to relax a little bit because it isn't as deadly? Or, you know, should we be as concerned because the transmissibility is still higher than chickenpox than the original variant? So I agree with you. And I think the, the uh, uh, point here that you just made makes a lot of sense to me. And that's, again, another commonsensical issue with people that they shouldn't let their guard down. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't get, uh, uh, you know, together uh, and closed spaces in the uh, around Christmas time, like what we said last year. So mm -hmm. it's uh, in, in New Year's and parties and things like that. Mm -hmm. Unless everybody obviously knows about everybody's status uh, in terms of vaccination, but even for vaccinated people, it, there are a lot of factors because uh, that like when they were uh, boosted, for example, mm -hmm. because even after uh, a booster dose, the immunity kind of goes down by a huge amount after 10 weeks. Right. So you are back to like a 30 to 50% protection after mm -hmm. that. So uh, as a result, people, you know, think, oh, I am boosted and I'm okay. Well, in, in Israel, they are thinking and start giving people, uh, some of the old people and the vulnerable people, a fourth dose. Mm -hmm. So um, there are there is a case to make here that sometimes, like I was saying initially, it's a race with time. Okay. So the less available people for the virus to infect, the better off we are. Okay. And that's a, a very good point because it's not just getting vaccinated, it's at the same time. So if we're going in waves and it also has a possibility to continue to, to mutate and have, okay, that's a good point. In terms of vaccination, um, since the booster, because I know there have been a lot of complaints about Fauci and saying, okay, well, we're not at the point of doing a fourth booster, but uh, they do see a concern with the variants. Um, how can we stress the importance of vaccination at this point since there's, you know, the different variants, uh, the symptoms in terms of just your prudent lay person or your elderly person or someone who's immunocompromised, how can uh, vaccination still be effective at this point? I think uh, the point here to, uh, to, to really emphasize uh, to the public is we can't prevent the virus from mutations because a virus is in order to stay in business, they will mutate. And they, they can mutate various many mechanisms. The first one is they just, because they are multiplying, meaning copying themselves in the, our own cells, uh, it will make copies that are having some errors in them and that will be a mutation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other thing that as you know, that as long as it finds a bunch of unvaccinated people to circulate around them, then it's going to go into these people. Mm -hmm. And if these people ended up having co-infection, meaning another infection with another virus, uh, yes, you know, sometimes these viruses inject the genetic material into each other, and then you come, we call them recombinants, and there is a, a, a wave of kind of articles now that I think it came up early, but now they are really proving that this happens with this virus mm -hmm. is they recombine with other viruses. Ah. And uh, when they do that, you know, there is a high likelihood of being stronger okay. when they are combining and or recombining, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And the other one is really 
making sure that the in immunocompromised or immunosuppressed people, like people with cancer and things like that, that uh, this is another vulnerable group, people that when the virus goes into them, by just the mere fact that the immune system is weaker, mm -hmm. they are getting around it. And when they get around a weak immune system and stay in the body of one individual for a very long time, then they become like a petri dish for growth. So they learn how to evade immune systems in these people. And then they go to another person that's mm -hmm. even healthy and they learn the trick, how to infect somebody healthy and uh, don't react to the uh, antibodies, for example, block the antibody response. And what's scary about even Omicron more than others is we used to have few mutations in the different variants before, but mm -hmm. this variant has uh, about 50 mutations, 36 wow. of them, yeah, which are a mutation, just a one change. So you have 50 changes. 36 of these changes in the area where the virus latches on the cells of the body. So 36 of them. So wow. when you have the, the, the area that we talk about in the spike protein part mm -hmm. of the virus, uh, it, it's really important to understand how the virus acts and how it's strengthening the hold on, on these cells. Mm -hmm. And because of these 36 mutations, it's the key unlock mechanism that's between the receptor and our own cells and the virus, which we call this area receptor binding area. Uh, and the virus itself becomes tighter and newer to the body. So the, so that whenever there is an old antibody kind of produced, the good old way, or you give somebody monoclonal antibody, things like that, they don't react very well because the virus now is tighter. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because it, it almost seems now when just speaking upon it, just being careful that, especially with the Omicron variant, that everyone has caught it or is catching it. And I'm, I see that it's speaking to those mutations. I, I didn't know there were 50 mutations within that one strain and 36 yep. of them uh, attaching to the protein site. So in terms of the transmissibility, do you think that the surge itself from this variant will move us towards an endemic versus a pandemic? Or are we really still in a pandemic when we should treat it that way? I think uh, from what I've seen so far and read, it seems that the virus will be with us for the foreseeable future, like mm -hmm. maybe if I am reading the future and maybe I stay to be right. corrected, um, it will be with us forever. Like that's the way I think about it. It's like flu. So yes. you, you just know that there will be periods where there would be like peaks of, of uh, viral transmission and cases. And this is where, you know, you, you get your numbers higher than, than the kind of uh, uh, flat, uh, numbers and flat incidents that will continue beyond the peak, but not like, you know, the, the older times or the, my older conversation, you know, I thought that if everybody, if there are men, uh, vaccination mandates, if everybody gets vaccinated, we might turn around a corner, but right. because this didn't happen. And I, I, I don't think like the virus reached the stage of being comfortable you know, enough to do whatever. Right. And, and uh, we can, I guess, dislodge him from this level of comfort. <laughs> he's here now. He's here. He's moved in, toothbrush on the sink. <laughs> he, yes, he has moved in. That's, I think that's what I'm afraid to say. But I think when you think of the story of Omicron itself, it, it started in South Africa. We know that South Africa has uh, a lot of HIV cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that offers like a, an immunosuppressed group of people, some of them at least, that the virus will use them to uh, multiply and become evasive mm -hmm. and ignore the uh, or disregard the antibodies present in, the, in, in these people. And it's as a result- The recombinant that you were speaking yeah, about here. Exactly. And I think as a result of this, it changed. And the, the other theory, 
behind the emergence of, of Omicron is something we call reverse zoonosis. And this is another theory and people think it could be correct too. And the reverse zoonosis is we give the virus to animals uh, in general, like uh, domestic and otherwise. And these animals circulated the virus within them, came up with a new variant, which is the Omicron, give it back to us. Oh, wow. And all of us have contact with a lot of animals, whether they are dogs and cats and right. anything else. Uh, the only one that we know from biology and from everything else that it really can give it to man is the mink. But okay. I think there's now a, a kind of a working theory that can go into others and start reinfecting people after circulation these uh, animals and it becomes a different variant. Uh, okay. One that can jump species that can go from an animal to a human being. Wow. So would they, would the animal, whether domesticated or not, would they also have symptoms or would they mostly be asymptomatic? Some, some, they, some they will have symptoms, but not all of them. Wow. So again, there might be some asymptomatic animals. And I, I'm not saying like, you know, it's, we have proved that it's a cat to man or dog right. to man. I don't want to infer that, but I'm saying from other theories out there that talk about like how the pangolins, which, you know, are ant eating kind mm -hmm. of animals ended up becoming like a reservoir of infection in China mm -hmm. and transmitted to humans because humans get in touch with them. Mm -hmm. The same mechanism could happen and repeat itself even other with other animals um, to the extent that animals become a major source of transmission right. and a major reservoir of infection. Right, so we're just looking at research and theories in terms yes. of studying how it's, how it's mutating and changing and, and the origin of it, so yeah. Yes, yes. Good. Well, another question we had from the community was about the CDC's new recommendation to reduce quarantine from 10 to five days. Any information we can get to gain more understanding? I know uh, folks just don't understand why at this point, and they almost feel like um, it's being fallacious. Okay, well, we're at, we were at 14, at 10, now five. Is there a reasoning behind uh, the CDC's new recommendation? I think the, the evidence that we have recently, like maybe a few weeks ago, kind of evidence, scientific evidence, point to the fact that the incubation period, which is the wow. time from infection to symptoms, or infection to clinical disease is shorter with Omicron. Got it. Maybe okay. two, two to three days, you know? So that's, mm -hmm. you know, like you're saying, that that's the thing that behind the shorter uh, isolation or quarantine time. Oh, that's good. So if the incubation period is shorter, it's more contagious, so therefore your quarantine time will be shorter. That does right. shine a little light on it. And you know, the CDC, uh, under the current leadership is a very reasonable in terms of not even following the evidence only, but balancing a lot. It's a balancing act. So if you remember recently, there were a, a lot of a lot of flight cancellations because of staff. They yes. can't staff them. Uh, the reason for that is a lot of people probably get infected. Uh, and as a result, these people should go back to work. Well, when they should go back to work, without threatening a public health and you can keep them forever or you can keep them for two weeks or you can keep them for a week. So I think the guidance has to be balanced with evidence and with really needs in, in different groups of people to the extent that you don't uh, err on the side of, of being absolutely unreasonable. Right. <laughs> so with all of our discussion, where do we land with control versus prevention versus treatment? So we know it's here to stay. We know we're going into our third year. Where, where are we with control prevention versus treatment? Well, I think this is a very good question. I think from my vantage point, I guess, as an epidemiologist, uh, I like more to go into the curve towards prevention and control. Right. Because I don't want people to start getting, again, more of a the safer and and having a high comfort level when they hear things like we have a pill now uh, and you yeah. you know what I mean 
Mm -hmm. So this new pill, the Merck pill, is um, and the Pfizer pill. There are two of them, but the one that's studied a lot is the uh, is the the Pfizer pill. Mm -hmm. That we know that this pill can uh, reduce severity, reduce duration of of the disease, and also you know you wouldn't get hospitalized when you take it early in the course of the disease. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that people should just uh, disregard masks and disregard vaccination and say I have a pill. Mm -hmm. So I think we would like just to make sure the treatment, uh, sort of new discoveries in treatment doesn't change our prevention efforts by vaccination and our prevention practices and wouldn't also change our control practices, which are more or less in the realm of don't get your, your, your when you when you have symptoms you need to check on them right. um, you know I and, and you need to make sure you are away from people by wearing masks and having the right mask because again the newer studies about the right masks now say most of these cloth masks are not good they right. should have a, a, a mask that should be um have this electrostatic charge on it and should be you should be able to like with a, a substance called the uh, uh, pro propylene and and this one is it 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 really uh, filters more of the of the uh, aerosols and you know that, that this current omicron is uh, transmitted highly via aerosols like a common cold so, okay. you know, it's not like the old days where we know oh, contact is okay. It's not a lot of the virus in the doorknobs. It's not this, it's not that. And it needs really close contact. This one doesn't need close contact. Wow. So as a result, I think the public should learn that wearing masks in public, especially in closed areas or in closed areas is important and wearing the right mask is important. important too. That's a good point because I know um, just having them a quantity, folks have cloth masks, some have the N95, some have the surgical mask. So knowing that that ingredient in terms of the new variant is uh, better to use than the cloth mask. Uh, there yes. As well. And surgical masks are really good too, but I mm -hmm. think people need to make sure they fit them right. So, yes. you know, they, you know what I mean? They put them over their nose and they press it so it will be tight fit. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think, you know, the, the just general little cloth masks because of, they don't fit really well and they don't filter. filter. They don't you stop the, the viruses coming in from getting into our noses, you know, and our mouth. And I think that's the point here to say about masks. Yeah, thank you. And I'm glad that you landed on some of the behavioral and psychological, psychological pieces of it because we've been in it so long, we can become a little complacent about uh, where we are just because we want to push through. But I like that you highlighted that although it seems, you know, that everyone is getting the Omicron very, they seem okay, but some of them may have been vaccinated. So that's why they're doing well. You know, I, just, I wanted to focus on the perception of where we're going and not to be complacent in terms of, okay, well, this is our surge, this is it, we're going into year three and let us let us be a little bit lax in terms of how we treat what, where we are right now so that we can finally get to get to the new normal. I won't say normal, new normal uh, in the next year. Hopefully we'll get to a new normal, but I think it depends on, on people's behaviors and people uh, really believing in vaccines and getting them. Because right. I think that's the most important factor. And again, it's a race with time because as long as it's a kind of a checkered kind of behavior, some people do, some people don't, some people have, some people don't have in different countries and stuff like this. And uh, one case, just traveling from one site that there are a, a lot of like new cases of something while they're incubating it and nobody knows right. about- and that's just you know, not even in the US, it's worldwide. <laughs> Yeah, timing. 
uh, getting vaccinated and boosted too. So that's just something to think about in terms of not just United States, we're talking about the entire world. Right, right. And uh, I hope that we'll have a global policy soon that would say, all right, we're gonna vaccinate different countries at this rate and uh, you know, and there will be high rate of compliance uh, generally in, 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 the, in the whole world, you know, whether mm -hmm. Europe or here. At, we, we are at 60 something percent today vaccination rate, which is really very low, yeah. I would say. Mm -hmm. Especially for year three. Being yeah. Year. And, so, and uh, it, it allows just for the virus to evolve more and more and more. You right, know, they get comfortable. It's like, okay, well, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm here to stay 2022, 23, and 24. I see you all there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, with everything, are there any last comments or things you want to discuss as we head into the new year? Any tips for folks? Like, I know we're excited to go into 2022, but any precautionary measures, any positive outlooks? I guess I, I would like to end on a positive outlook in terms of going into 2022. Well, I think I think I, I'm always optimistic about people really uh, do the right thing for themselves and for the loved ones and for a society at large. Right. Uh, we have obviously, as anywhere else, we have uh, uh, a lot of people that they might think me, 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 and they don't think about you know others. But uh, I think it's a minority. So I believe that. Well, with this kind of pact that people have with others in society to mm -hmm. make sure that they do the right thing and to do the most reasonable thing. Uh, not like wait for somebody to tell them what to do. Right. And uh, I think if all of us just have this social responsibility towards ourselves, our families, people we love, um, it will be a better society, a better world that everybody will be helping everybody else rather than hurting themselves or hurting other people. And that's a major part of epidemiology, isn't it, Ozzy? Just in terms of being cognizant of how you impact the population, your environment. Yes, yes, that's, I think, a very important part. And I think we many times uh, relax and think that we're having treatments for everything in the world under the sun because we have a lot of research and a yeah. lot of capability. And even like, I don't want to close on a, on a uh, kind of a maybe sad note or something that there is a theory also that thinks that our experiments with this antiviral in uh, South Africa, maybe was a factor in mm -hmm. creating Omicron. So we were, we were trying to have clinical trials there and to give people this new uh, antiviral, the, the the Pfizer one, right? and I think they said as part of the side effects or collateral damage of it is uh, it acts actually by making the virus, like making making it mutate. So mm -hmm. it, it, it creates mutations and as a result, it, uh, it's less uh, pathogenic, it's less infectious, it's, it's weaker. But right. I think in the process, you could change some uh, uh, genetic characteristics, and then you might go on the other side, especially for the uh, less immune people right. or people that they might have an issue with, the, like they have cancer, or they have a, mm -hmm. a, a, a poor immune response in general. And that's why there is another theory, a third one, that said that part of creating it probably was in some people as a result of. Um, having this antiviral too. Wow, wow. So still a lot to consider and just to make sure that we each do our part, no matter right. what point in the in our current process that we still need to be cognizant of what we can do to get us get us to the place that we want to be, you know? Right. So I think that that's what I want to say is vaccine, vaccine, vaccine so far. Uh, that's the science we really have. And uh, pills and stuff like this, yeah, they are there as a second uh, or third line of defense, but we need to do the right thing first. And mm -hmm. if we need these pills or we need these shots or we need something else because we are sick, 
we have done our duty before right. we got sick. Right. So don't see the pills as the primary measure. That's a secondary, tertiary. You really yes. need to get back in and boost it first. That's good. Yeah. Well, it is always a pleasure, uh, Ozzy, to have you on. Thank you for the information. Everyone will be uh, viewing this live. I'm putting on the recording on live. If you have questions, always drop them in the comments or you can email us directly. Uh, but until then, be safe, be well, be socially responsible, and have a wonderful and happy new year. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy new year. <laughs>